If you're offering AI automation services or you're a beginner AI agency owner and don't know how to price your project, then you're not alone. Most beginners either undervalue their projects and burn out or they overprice their services and lose clients. So in this video, I'm going to break down the exact pricing strategy that will allow you to charge the correct pricing every single time, regardless of whether you're a complete beginner or you've had multiple clients. I'm going to use real life experience that I've had from my AI agency for the past year that I've been offering AI automation services and closed multiple deals. So that way you can utilize the same exact approach to close more deals and build a sustainable business. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now I have multiple sections when it comes to pricing, including the basics and advanced on my AI agency course and my community here. So feel free to jump in we, where we also start you. If you're a complete beginner, we start you from week one, a day to day accountability program where we set you up and give you detailed instructions on to how, how to start your AI agency services with NADN from which is like a five week program. And then we also have our client success tool, which we talk about different uh, packaging, different pricing, how to run your discovery calls and how to get your first client um, uh, based on real case uh, client case studies that we have on our AI agency. So make sure you check that out. If you're interested in that, you can join in. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the basic strategy of pricing. Obviously, when it comes to pricing your AI automation projects, there is no one size fits all approach, right? Now, there are a few methods that you can use, even if you're starting, even if this is your first client, to make sure that you are not falling out of bounds from either a too low pricing or too high, right? You need to have, you need to find the sweet spot, which is basically, you don't want to undervalue or underprice your services so that way you don't attract low value clients. And on top of that, the clients will also determine if you offer too low of a pricing, they will say, why are you so cheap, right? Uh, and then also if you're overpricing your services without any justification, that's going to also drive the clients away. So the way to find the sweet stuff, the sweet spot is to anchor your price to the value you're creating, not just the time and effort that you're putting in on your side, right? So, and this is what we refer to as the value based pricing approach. Now, value based pricing is all about framing your price in the terms of the return of investment that you're delivering for your clients. Now, the reason why this approach works best is because First of all, you want to understand the impact that your automation is going to provide for your clients. So let's take a look at this example. Let's say you're building an AI assistant, right? That's going to send WhatsApp messages to new leads, collect their information, schedule appointments through, let's say, Canonly, and then organize that data into a CRM, whether it's HubSpot or Salesforce or whatever it may be. Now, what you need to ask yourself is, hey, how much time is this currently taking the business owner or their staff? How many hours per week could they, could this automation save them? And then what's the average value of a single lead to their business, right? And then obviously, how many leads do they typically lose due to these missed follow-ups or lack of organization? Now, the way you can calculate the pricing here is, let's say your business owner is losing five hours a week on these tasks, right? And if they value their time at $100 an hour, which is very typical in the US, for example, uh, that will be about $2,000 a month or $500 a week that they are losing in the opportunity. Now, if your solution, if your AI solution, this automation that you're providing can save 80% of that time, now you're delivering about $1,600 worth of value every single month to their business. Now, the way you can price this project is a safe bet is to do 30% of that monthly value. Again, this is kind of on the lower end. You can go up to 50% even more, right? Depending on what the, who the client is. Now, again, even if you do a 30% of that monthly value, that would be $400 a month, which is again, $1,500 that you can charge for this entire build plus a monthly maintenance fee for ongoing support. Now, I'm a huge proponent of providing this monthly maintenance fee or which is a retainer model because chances are the business owner is not too familiar with AI. They don't know what automation is, how it works. They're only, the only thing they care about is the results, right? So you want to give them the option that, hey, I'm going to build this for you. And then on top of that, I will take care of the monthly maintenance so that way you don't have to worry about anything. You're just going to 
uh, take a look at the return on investment. You're going to see the savings and the results of this automation. And you as the consultant or this AI automation service provider will take care of everything. Now, there's two huge um, advantage of this retaining or, month, or monthly maintenance fee for ongoing support that you can provide. The way you can position this for your client is that, again, first, like I said, you can tell them, hey, you don't have to worry about the technology aspect. I'll take care of it, right? And then a huge advantage to you is that over time, you build a good relationship with this business owner. Now, chances are if a business sees good return on their investment, if they see the value of your automation, if you are constantly in touch with them through this maintenance fee, chances are they will hire you for more projects as well. So that's a huge advantage there, right? Now, second value that this provides to you is the fact that you can connect through other to other businesses, to other clients through these uh, kind of monthly maintenance uh, fee that you have because now you're developing a relationship in that specific industry, right? So that's those are two huge advantage of offering this monthly maintenance or this retainer model. So I would suggest even if you have to lower your initial fee for the build, make sure you're offering your maintenance fee because like I said, uh, even if it is a couple of hundred dollars a month in the long term, it's worth it for sure. Now, the second method for pricing is called the anchor pricing method. Now, what this means is that you're going to be pricing your uh, project and you're going to position it um, next to a higher price point to make it look more reasonable. The way uh, here's a good example for this, right? So let's say you say, hey, if you hired a full-time assistant for this particular task, this automation that I'm building for you, it would cost you $3,000 a month. Now, again, $3,000 a month, especially in the US, is actually a very low salary for somebody, right? So now you can say, if it's going to cost you $3,000 a month to, to hire this assistant, my solution will automate all of the tasks without the headache of dealing with the person themselves. Now, that's a one-time investment of, let's say, $1,800 plus a $300 a month on or $300 a month on the maintenance fee. Now, you are charging them uh, $2,100 and you're saying, I'm going to be saving you $900 a month at minimum, right? Because like I said, uh, $3,000 is probably the lowest you can offer to somebody. And then on top of that, like I said, in the US, at least if you hire somebody full time, there's all sorts of other headaches and all sorts of like insurance and all, all these other things that come into the picture. So that's why a lot of times if you position uh, this against a cost or against um, this higher uh, price point, it makes it look a lot more reasonable. It also makes it look a lot more attractive, right? At the end of the day, if a business seen, if a business can see that, hey, this is going to actually save me money in the long term, then they will definitely hire you. Obviously, you have to deliver on the result itself. But if you're building your automation, it just uh, makes sense that you will be able to have this as a cost effective alternative to a more expensive and manual solution, right? So the third method is tier pricing structure. Now, this will give your uh, clients more option. And again, this is going to make it a bit easier for them to say yes to. So the way this works is you can offer three different methods here. You can do basic package, you can do standard package, and you can do premium package. Now for each different packages, you can actually offer additional uh, resources or you can offer additional things on top of your basic um, build that you're providing. So for example, you can say for this basic package, which costs you $1,200, this is just going to take care of the WhatsApp messaging and lead connection and the CR CRM data organization. And as the standard package, you say it's going to include everything in the basic package and then Calendly integration for scheduling and then also email follow-up sequences. Now for you, these additional steps that you're adding, it's not going to make that big of a difference as far as the build itself, but you're offering your clients multiple options. And whenever you, cr you offer multiple options, especially if your goal is to send the stand uh, to sell the standard package then if you offer a basic price that's lower than that and a premium package that's way higher right then the standard package is going to look very very attractive for you so this is the third option and again another good practice is to make sure you're adding non round non round numbers right because this is not a psychology thing uh that non round numbers actually feel that you are calculating this and it's not just some random n number that you're 
um, that you're creating out of thin air, right? So instead of, for example, if you say instead of $1,500, consider doing like $1,485 or $1,489 or something like that, right? And again, this just gives the client the impression that you've ca carefully calculated the cost based on specific factors and not just uh, pulling the number out of thin air, right? And then same thing, like I mentioned, as far as the retainer and maintenance fee, maintenance fee, that's very important because you can also add that to your tier pricing of your basic support, standard support, and premium support because this uh, is going to look very attractive to them. And again, as far as the pricing, like I mentioned before, there is no one size fits all. As you gain more experience, you can pri uh, adjust your price over time. So hopefully this gave you a good uh, idea of how to get started, at least uh, pricing your projects. And like I said, we have multiple sample pricing that we use for our AI workshop. Feel free to check that out to join the community. I want to put the link in the description. Again, if you're interested in starting your AI automation to earn money with NADN, please make sure you check out the community. And then also, if you're completely new, we will set you up and start you from the basics to learn NADN and then also to advanced ones where we have exclusive D-type topics in our community. And then we also have weekly calls or daily calls that you can jump in and ask us any question, whether it's AI agency related or tech support with NADN. We're all there to provide support and help for you. So make sure you join the community. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe because I've got a lot more content that's coming up on the AI agency side and then also on NADN that you don't want to miss. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.